Great. Do we have any motions to direct the city manager to add agenda items to the future? Council Member Christensen. Yes. Um, I, I know that all of you received the same emails that I received, so I know you're all aware of this. Uh, Broomfield County or Broomfield City Council last week, I believe, passed uh, ordinance. Emergency Ordinance 2135, Temporary Prohibition on Rental Late Fees. Um, I know that um, I sent this to uh, um, the city manager and to the city attorney over the weekend, and they, had or they were already looking at this. So I would like to formally put it on the agenda uh, for a future meeting. Um, um, they're good landlords and they're bad landlords. They're good tenants and they're bad tenants. Um, late fees are for bad tenants who were perpetually wait to let them know that they can't be late because landlord has to pay their mortgage, but they don't do anything for good tenants. Good tenants are not late with their rent unless they lost their job, they lost their health insurance, they, um, they sick, any kind of emergency like that. We do not want to add to the list of evictions for something like a late rent fee. All right, uh, it's open for debate. Whether or not we're gonna put this on the agenda, do we have any comments? All right, I'm gonna be voting against it only because uh, I think governments over the last six months have just gone overboard on interference in business, the economy, our lives and uh, if you have a contract, which is what rent is, it's basically a lease between two parties. The government has no business getting involved. And uh, uh, whether you're a landlord or, I mean, the, anyway, I'm just gonna vote against it and I'll fight like mad against it. All right, all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Nay. All right, motion carries six to one. Okay. Okay. Councilmember Peck. Thank you, Mayor Bagley. Um, I would like uh, council to bear with me for a moment while I explain my motion. Uh, I'm going to circle back on our air quality monitoring contract uh, on reviewing Boulder Air's presentation schedule, send it to city council for their pre purview within 48 hours of staff's review. Also I'd like to say on. that I, I, I'm, I would second that because I, I do feel that it is already in the contract that Dr. Helmick may, may not make uh, policy discussions for the city and speak on behalf of the city. That's obvious, but it's in the contract and I think that resolves everything. He may make, um, do a an, uh, scientific analysis and um, that's what he does for a living and I'm sh pretty sure that's all he's really interested in. <laughs> Doing. Uh, I guess the, so there's a motion on the floor and I'm going to restate the motion, which was basically council member Peck said um, the motion was to bring back the contract with two versions, one removing the first paragraph and another one restating the paragraph in order to limit the staff's ability to deny Dr. Helmig uh, uh, the ability to share his data and conclusions. Um, did I sum summarize that good enough? Yeah. Yes, Mayor, thank you. Okay, I guess the, the only thing... The, knowing what Mayor Bagley said that one should know before releasing it would be very nice, but it's not knowable. I mean, what he described is the entire scientific peer review process. So if Dr. Helmig is going to publish something um, or present some interim findings, they're not peer reviewed yet. It's a common occurrence that that something like that has to be retracted, but the city of Longmont scientists, as good as they are, are not going to be able to, to make a, a ruling on something like that. So Joan, do you mind? So what I would suggest is I sign it. Um, I instruct Harold right now to put it on a future agenda, um, a contract amendment, re removing staff's ability to die, deny Dr. Helmig the ability to use his data and then we can just he can get going on the contract he can get continue with his monitoring it gets put on the agenda we accomplish what i think you're trying to accomplish and we just we just get it done is that okay that sounds great thank you dale and mayor bagley 
Okay, so, so Harold, if, if you could just put that on the future agenda, make note, it's public record that the mayor is asking for that. So thank you. Well, thank you. Right. Let's move on to public invited to be heard. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead. Hi, I live at 2930 Vance Street in Wheat Ridge, Colorado, and I was just calling to say thank you for considering delivery. Um, it looks like medical only is currently what's being discussed, but um, we just encourage Longmont to consider delivery first and foremost for medical, um, as well as ultimately recreational. I think it's um, what keeps people the safest. I know that several licensees have testified saying that they don't think it's a great idea, um, but that's not a reason to make a rule against it. Um, this is Doe Kelly. I live on Barberry Drive in Longmont. Okay. Good evening to you all. I have what I think is a big question for you. Should you decide without further and extensive study that an acceleration of the proposed AMI, uh, aka smart meter program is warranted, will you be offering the residents of Longmont a complete informed consent? Will you inform them that there could be adverse health consequences for them or their loved ones simply with the added electromagnetic load of a smart meter pulsating microwaves on and through their dwelling? Yes, uh, thank you, Mayor Bagley and council members. Uh, my name is Abe Melendez. I am at 1543 South Kaufman. I'm calling on the concerns of the light that is being put up at Kaufman and Pike. I've been at 1543 South Kaufman and Southmore Park since 1981. Uh, throughout the years, the neighborhood has slowly evolved to where there are more families with the young, younger kids. And our concern is the neighborhood, in the neighborhood, is the growing number of vehicles that are being funneled down our street from the town of Prospect and Pike. Okay, I'm at 1534 South Hoffman Street. Good evening, Mayor Bagley, council members. I'm with you again tonight to talk to you about the traffic signal being installed at the corner of Pike Road and South Hoffman Street. This week, I thought I will start outlining which codes, ordinance, and standards are being overridden in order to place this light at this location. I just yes, uh, my name is Marty Pfeffer, and I live in Lafayette. Um, I uh, come to Longmont a lot, and I have friends that live there. Um, I am alarmed and disappointed that the city of Longmont is considering a move to convert the city's electric utility metering system to a smart meter, uh, advanced metering infrastructure. Thank you. My name is Sarah Webb and I live at 1615 Grant Court. I am calling because um, there's been talks about changing the guidance for short-term rentals. I just wanted to quickly tell a little bit about why I'm a short-term rental um, owner in Longmont. I'm in the military um, and I purchased a home in Colorado because it's where I'm from. And I wanted to ensure that I would have a home in Colorado as rents um, and property values increase. Since I'm a military member and I will be deploying soon, having a short-term rental allows me to be able to pay my mortgage and not have to put my items in storage when I deploy, which I will be doing in February of this year. Hi, this is Erin Spieth with Native Roots in Denver. We are largely in favor of this uh, rule to adopt delivery for the city of Longmont. But one revision that we would like to suggest is in 670-230, Part I, which is on page 22 of the red lines in the packet for this study session. We would like to ask that the city replace the word city with the word state. This would mean that should additional jurisdictions opt in to marijuana delivery, nearby stores in good standing with the city and with the state could participate and continue serving Longmont patient communities. This yeah, uh, I'm Stan Cole. I'm a long-term resident of the city of Longmont. And the reason I'm calling is because um, there seems to be this thing of throwing together an ordinance uh, against people living in um, uh, uh, our, you know, vehicles and RVs. And, you know, I kind of have a feeling that you know, you're doing this in a pandemic when most people, particularly people that are living in uh, vehicles and RVs, they don't have power or internet ability to get hold of people. 
Hey, hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Adam Cole, and I'm also another Native Roots representative alongside my Colin Aaron, a colleague, Aaron Spees. Um, and kind of my tenure with Native Roots, you know, my most recent two years, I've acted as a customer experience uh, manager in addition to a project manager. And, you know, first and foremost, like, I would like to echo Aaron that pre-pandemic, we did an internal survey of 97 medical shoppers in our Longmont facility and 88% point something were in support of this. Again, that includes public, first call public, actually our only call public invited to be heard because it's our study session. Right. So let's go ahead and move on to our COVID-19 update by Harold. Uh, Mayor, council, based on time and the other items we have on the agenda, Unless there's any specific questions about numbers, um, I'm not going to go into the graphs. I'm gonna ask Sandy to talk about some of the programs we have. Hello, Mayor Bagley, members of council, Sandy Cedar, Assistant City Manager. Uh, one of the conversations that I saw over email with council members was really asking about what are the things that we're doing today to help folks. I think council member Christensen asked this question along with the request about the Broomfield Ordinance, information about that. Um, so I thought I'd just share a couple things. I did send a flyer to the city council on Friday that kind of went through some of the different pieces that we're um, in the middle of assisting with. So I'd like to share my screen for just a moment. The other thing is that we have all kinds of other assistance that we have on our website. If you go to the coronavirus relief fund uh, relief page, you'll be able to see all sorts of tabs that say, how do I get help for my business? How do I get help for my for child care, et cetera, et cetera. And we have all that information on the website. Okay, let's move on to uh, study session items number 6A. Uh, let's start with the possible code changes to allow for medical marijuana delivery. But just to review um, what is before you tonight, um, we're looking for direction whether or not to bring back ordinances that would make these changes. Um, so the first uh, section of changes that we brought forth, Mayor, um, I believe you directed us back in June to bring back medical marijuana delivery in light of the uh, COVID pandemic uh, to allow people to receive delivery of their uh, medical marijuana. The second change is why we were in code um, that we are bringing forth for you uh, to consider um, our changes to chapter 6.70 and chapter 2.68. To it. And then um, also why we were there, a couple other changes. Um, the authority asked um, under 6.70.180 to add um, the opportunity to allow the marijuana licensing authority to administratively approve modifications instead of being obligated to set a hearing. Make a motion. I move that we direct staff to proceed forward um, pursuant to the slides that we saw on medical marijuana delivery. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. There's a motion on the floor. Are there any? All right, we have a motion on the floor to uh, direct staff to move forward with the presentation comparing an ordinance which would permit delivery of medical marijuana. Um, inside Longmont. All right, let's go ahead and take a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much, Tim and Don. Let's move on to 6B. Thank you. And it's a Longmont Housing Authority. Harold? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, I move that staff also move forward in preparation of the ordinances to clarify the role of the authority versus the secretary. Second. Second. Yeah. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right. The motion carries unanimously. Thank all right. You. Now let's move on to the Longmont Housing Authority operations. Harold, yeah. tell us how you all. Um, had or received a copy of the report. Before we go there, when this originally started, um, the chair and vice chair of the Longmont Housing Authority, and Cameron can talk about this in more detail later, approached us and we began working with um, Jillian and Longmont Housing Authority staff to, as a fact, our community needs a successful and sustainable housing authority. And at the end of the day, failure is not an option. Um, as city staff, we went in and we, we worked with the housing authority. 
our teammates at the Housing Authority, and we did our own analysis. We then brought in BSH strategies. Uh, we also asked her to, to do a brief analysis on the financial condition, look at our property operations, talk to us about best practices, um, and create a compliance calendar tool. Um, the assets are in good shape. The facilities are good sh in shape. We have um, a strong balance sheet today, um, and there's reasonable performance in the portfolio and balance sheet. And then we talked about the timeline. So, you know, we've hit the point where we had the initial IGA with the city. Um, we said an immediate needs addressed. What I can say is we are addressing immediate needs, but we are still seeing immediate needs come up. Um, One of the reasons I wanted to present this is because the board um, really was in alignment with what we talked about and the recommendations that we made. Um, and Harold, uh, just in conclusion, I just wanted to echo everybody's thoughts. Um, you and your staff are doing this above and beyond what your heretofore or, or, or prior responsibilities were. And I only asked um, Mayor Council as required by charter. Um, we're gonna we're presenting the budget to you all tonight. Today um, we are presenting you all with a balanced budget with no tax increases. Uh, the total operating budget is three hundred and seventy one point seven million. It is seventeen point eight million more than twenty the twenty twenty adopted budget of three hundred fifty three point nine million. Uh, that's a five point uh, zero five percent increase. I know you approximately 39.6 billion in accumulated fund balance will be drawn down in 2021. Um, and that's primarily to meet the capital needs. Some of this, the highlight, and this is where I said, we're gonna really show what we were, we were dealing with. Um, the proposed general fund budget for 21 um, is 88.09 million. That's actually a decrease of 3.9%. So there's no, in terms of highlights at this point, um, we don't have any increase in pay ranges in the proposed budget. Um, open range uh, employee compensation is budgeted at 101% of market. Um, we are asking human resources to gather um, 2021 market pay data and pending our revenue performance, um, we could assess consideration of one-time payments or market adjustments in 21 but that's really gonna be dependent on the financial performance that we see over the next few months. Um, the proposed budget does include step increases for step employees. So when you, you look at that, it is fire police and electric because they're on a step system. This has yeah. probably been the, the most interesting budget that we've had to go through. And, and you'll see this in the budget message in terms of really just trying to figure out what that revenue number is going to look like as we look ahead, um, you know, this has been a really interesting conversation for us. We know there's a number of short-term economic risk. We know businesses haven't opened, others won't reopen. Um, you know, if you watch the national news, we're seeing bankruptcies by retailers. It's not uncommon these days. Uh, hey, uh, Teresa Malloy, budget manager. So logistics, um, in the past, we have provided uh, the budget, the CIP and the pay plan, as well as uh, the uh, council communications and all the attachments that go along with it in your Dropbox. With the new PrimeGov uh, agenda management system, um, you no longer do use Dropbox. So this year, we are gonna be putting that um, information out there on the city's website for you. Um, and we will be directing you to the website to access the, the documents. So, so my question before we go to that, do you have a CIP presentation then or will that be in September? We're, we're moving that to September. That's a fairly okay. lengthy presentation and we All knew right. it'd go longer. Okay. Let's go on to mayor and council comments. Oh, Councilmember Peck. 
Thank you, Mayor Badley. Uh, I would like to tell council and anybody who's listening that on uh, Sept September 21st, the North Metro in line is opening up and it's gonna be free rides for, uh, for the residents. Kudos to Mayor Bagley because he and I and all of the other transportation committees that we are on have been working very, very hard to get this in line finished. And now that it's finished and completed, uh, all of these different agencies are turning their attention to the nor our Northwest Corridor. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. I'll second. All right, there's a motion to adjourn on the table. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, the, the ayes have it unanimously. Until next week, people. And Harold, I'll uh, stop by to sign everything tomorrow. All righty? Great. Thank you, guys. Thanks.